So imagine a world. As a poet, I thought I'd take this literally and fantastically. So this is literally three postcards from the pandemic. The before postcard. We are amongst unbridled fires, lush landscapes blistering. We are reading about injustice, donating on our way to work, our faces pressed against the window. During the pandemic, we are in partial lockdown, house to house, screen to screen, so many hours inside our heads, so much kindness, and yet we crumble into ourselves, doubt all our simple decisions. We mourn family and feasts and festivity, begin to imagine a new elongated parable. We are in slow motion at the dinner table. We look lovingly at the spoon. We communicate in chat room smiles, but dissolve into bundles when we leave. We send packages to those we love, but can't open the toothpaste without weeping. We feel as if we're in a snow dome, trinkets unmoored behind glass. Writing just to release our introspection, curling up in blankets just for warmth. Gaps highlighted in wealth, status, age, race, sex and disability. We have marched forcefully with thunder, but carefully. So much kindness and yet so many hours inside our heads, house to house, screen to screen. We are in personal lockdown. And the third postcard from the pandemic, after. We are sitting in the park with blankets. We are giving the earth an electrocardiogram. We are decreasing zoonotic and vector-borne diseases. We are increasing all habitable regions. We are measuring the rise of biodiversity. We are dismantling any outmoded structures. We are carving out a new equilibrium. We are cultivating and ripening our values. We are luxuriating in ongoing learning. We are bathing in the shadow of the cosmos. We are listening to our elders we are communicating with our scientists. We are immersed in our hunt for discovery. We accept our shortcomings, but demand more. We are vigorous in our change. We are moving. Wish we were here. Sincerely, Earth. Okay. Thank you. So let's hear from some amazing speakers. So nothing can fill us so completely with wonder as the night sky. Its beauty, its vastness, and its apparent unchanging presence. Not just on human timescales of millennia, but on timescales of billions of years. But even our local galaxy can be punctuated by the occasional explosion. And we call that a supernova. And if you watch very carefully here, you'll see the bright star at the bottom of the screen explode just as a supernova would, spreading the elements that have been forged in the core of the star right through the galaxy. And it's a very human image in the end. I was remarking earlier, it ends up looking a little bit like the iris of an eye um, at the end. So what do we learn? The universe will proceed on its course with or without us. And the natural forces are much more powerful than anything we can ever conjure up. Ultimately, we're ruled by nature, be it a supernova or COVID-19. And we are creatures of our universe, from the atoms of our body to our entire fragile ecosystem. Our existence is completely intertwined with the very atoms that make up the universe. Events such as COVID or the 2019-20 bushfires are not really under our control. They are an integral part of the environment, but we can affect our interactions with our environment as it unfolds. We are responsible for our future in the universe. Postcards mark a moment in time and a kind of special relationship and you take those and you stick them up on your, your cork board to, to just signal to everyone that someone liked me enough while they were in London to send me a picture. 
And during this global moment that we're all in, and we're all in different global moments, we're in one big moment, but we're having very different experiences. What would those postcards say if we started to send them? For me, my contribution is going to ask the question, what postcards would animals send us? The first one is one where if we pause through coronavirus and the lockdown, we vacated space that we usually occupy fully as humans. If you were fortunate enough to go to a natural area or a park, the quiet was deafening. And the next thing that happened is that space was filled with birdsong. Foxes out during the daytime in Royal Park. The penguins in St Kilda decided that they didn't need to stay on the rocks anymore, that if there weren't humans on the boardwalks, they could just as easily use the boardwalks. As humans, we're growing in number. And as we push out with our machines, with our farms, with our animals, we push animals back. And as we push them back, we leave less and less space for them. We touch every part of the globe and we push the animals out of our way. They just can't compete with our numbers, our machines and our relentless destruction. Imagine a world we left enough space for animals. A world where we were quiet enough to hear. And what we would hear might not make us happy. We would hear stories of animals killed for no good reason because someone thought their horn might be useful for medicinal purposes or their homes or their flesh. We might also hear about the brave people who protect them, like the rangers who look after these rhinos 24 hours a day. In far too many countries, conservation is left to charity or tourism. And when the world stopped and went into lockdown, the tourism dollars stopped. These animals would wish we were here. But the last postcard, and the one that you should keep on your cork board the longest, is the picture of this cute little guy. That's a pangolin, and it comes from the beginning. A reminder that an animal virus can jump species and can change the course of history. These guys are really rare. They're a scaly anteater. Trade in them is banned around the world, yet, the scales have been seen as medicinal and the flesh is eaten. While bats are considered the origin, we know that viruses from bats pass through other animals on their ways into humans. And we're not quite sure how that happened with this one. But it could have been a pig or a civet or a pangolin. To continue to push back animals, to think of them to things, to kill them needlessly and without thought is increasingly dangerous for them and for us. So let's pin up this postcard. And let's change the way that we think about animals. Thank you. Okay, first I'd, I'd like to thank Kate Phillips for the overall concept of this talk, which is based on the idea of I can't breathe. Postcard one. Images can help us question the value of our civil liberties in the face of a pandemic. Here in Australia, the trauma of an unprecedented bushfire season was still very raw. The smoke still choking us. So perhaps we could be forgiven for being incredulous when told that we could no longer go to the beach. Beach closed, said the signs, a phrase that grated hard against our sense of freedom in a country that prides itself on sun, surf and sand and unlimited access to all three at all times. Images of police patrolling beaches, asking people to leave amidst the new confusion of social distancing measures, brought words like draconian back into common usage. But it was for our own good, so we reluctantly complied. I can't breathe. Postcard two. Images can help us question our ethics. Are we doing the right thing by others? Random text from a friend. Toilet paper is running out. You got some, you okay? I've got 25 packets if you need some, and baked beans and instant noodles and lots of flour because I think I'll take up baking when I'm trapped inside. Mm -hmm. If it gets to that, which it will, everyone's gonna get it. Did you hear? Even Norman Swan, the doctor on the ABC has got it. I should get some more pasta. This is how the conversations went. I imagined people in their living rooms, Netflix on, surrounded by walls of toilet paper and canned food, waiting for the apocalypse. And while we waited for the virus to kill us, we lost our way in the supermarket. 
People fought over rolls of toilet paper like they were gold, losing their sense of dignity, of rationality, civility and kindness, and finding a long forgotten base form of humanness, the selfish drive to survive despite all others, even at the cost of others. I can't breathe. And postcard three, images can help us bring about action to look for a better future. As Australia flattened the curve and New Zealand abolished it, the COVID-19 death toll in the United States soared past 100,000 with millions infected. In a country where the president blithely contradicts scientific advice and the facade of equality rubs thin, lockdown and social distancing are more difficult to enforce. The virus may be indiscriminate in who it infects, but the black population of the US are the poorest and most vulnerable and almost three times more likely to die from COVID-19 than white people. In Australia, we worked quite quickly to protect our First Nations remote communities who already suffer the poorest health in the country. But it must be recognised that health in Indigenous and Black communities is an ongoing racial issue. And COVID is just the latest in a string of diseases to wreak havoc on these minority populations. Likewise, police treatment of Black populations in both the US and Australia has a long and traumatic history. Here, that history is often kept out of sight, out of mind, with two to 3% of the nation's population being politically easy to ignore, even after three royal commissions into Aboriginal deaths in custody. But in Minneapolis, when George Floyd was held down by police pleading that he could not breathe, America and the world exploded in anger. Somehow, the tension of the COVID-19 lockdown, of social distancing, of sanitising our hands, no matter what the colour, somehow this hideous respiratory disease made us realise that we're all only skin, bone, sweat and blood, that we rely on our neighbours when the chips are down, that we can commit to caring, that we can change for the better. I can't breathe. But imagine a world where we can, where we can balance our civil liberties with law, where we can act ethically towards others, and where we can act in the face of inequality and bring a sense of balance to the world. Satellite images like the one I'm showing here, I think are really etched into our, our minds from the extraordinary bushfire season that we had in Australia in 2019 and 2020. And we saw this national tragedy kind of unfurling before our eyes in the media. Um, we saw the, the billions of animals dying, the human lives lost, human livelihoods lost, and then this groundswell of support and empathy from, from both Australians and, and around the world. As a meteorologist and a, and a climate scientist, this image also speaks to me about the interconnectedness of our world. And you can see it's not just in the cities and the country towns in Australia and the rivers and the mountains and the farms, but across the Southern Ocean that this smoke ended up reaching. And I think this image also helps me reflect on the response of the firefighters and the volunteers that work together to um, fight the fires in, in the midst of adversity and gave us a glimpse into the future where we expect these bushfires to be more frequent um, and more hot weather associated with climate change. And then along came COVID and provided us with another global challenge. And in many ways, it's similar to climate change. It's both invisible and it's global, but we know from the science and from the data and from the impacts that, that climate change is real, just as the virus is real. So back at the start of the pandemic, we were told we need to enact measures such as social distancing and closing our borders, otherwise the consequences would be dire. And how did we work that out? Well, Michael J. Fox um, in Back to the Future was able to have a DeLorean, a, a machine that could take him back and forward in time and he could fix things that he might have messed up. But we don't have a DeLorean, but we do have models. And these models here, I'm showing a climate model, um, one of the most recent climate models 
that is able to simulate virtual worlds and we can use these models to project forward into the pathways that we might want for our world. And what do these models show? Well, this is a postcard which includes some of those models' projections for the future. In the black line, we have the Australian temperatures over the last 100 or so years, and you can see 2019 is the last data point, the hottest and driest year that Australia has experienced in this instrumental record. And in the top curve, the pink lines are showing the Australian temperatures from the models where we include emissions in a business as usual scenario where we keep burning fossil fuels and using the same energy mix as we have. In the bottom panel, the green lines are showing a very low emission scenario where we change our energy mix, where we stop burning fossil fuels and we keep our temperatures to the values that we can manage. Thank you.